up you guys my name is Kylie if you're new and today yes finally I am gonna be reviewing a nightmare on Elm Street from 1984 so if you're new here I just finished my Friday the 13th series there are 18 videos currently in that series I actually have a couple more planned but that's kind of over for now I also have a Halloween series as well and there are seven videos currently in that series so check that one out as well but yes today will be the beginning of my nightmare on Elm Street series I recently purchased the seven film collection and so I've kind of been having a marathon and I've been so excited to review these movies because oh my god they're iconic obviously but you probably know that so if you're new here or you're new to nightmare on elm street if you're like me and you're just now kind of watching them for the first time here is what happened a nightmare on elm street came out in 1984 and received a 76 percent on rotten tomatoes in this wes craven classic slasher film several midwestern teenagers fall prey to freddy krueger a disfigured midnight mangler who preys on the teenagers in their dreams which in turn kills them in reality after investigating the phenomenon nancy begins to suspect that a dark secret can kept by her and her friend's parents may be the key to unraveling the mystery. But can Nancy and her boyfriend Glenn solve the puzzle before it's too late? So I'm assuming that most people who clicked on this video are indeed fans of the franchise, but if you're not and you're new to it, I have a lot of fun facts that you probably have not heard of yet. In fact, I think I have the most fun facts for this movie than I do for like any of the other movies I've talked about on my channel. I have like a full page of them. So if you're a fan and you've been a fan since the 80s, I recommend maybe skipping this part because it's probably stuff you've heard, but there will be a time stamp linked down below so you can just click ahead and get right on to my review but okay time for fun facts new line cinema was saved from bankruptcy because of the success of this film and the title of this film was jokingly called the house that freddie built this is the film debut of johnny depp who my man my boy Oh, such a big fan. And speaking of Glenn, one of the main reasons why Johnny Depp was chosen is because Wes Craven's daughter found him dreamy. And she was not wrong. He also beat out the likes of Charlie Sheen, Brad Pitt, and Nicolas Cage for this role. The legendary Robert England, who plays Freddy Krueger, cut his hand on his knife glove the very first time that he tried to put it on. Speaking of Freddy, around the time of production in California, there were actually a series of child molestations taking place. And in the original script of this movie, Freddy Krueger was supposed to be a child molester but they decided that wasn't very tasteful in light of what was going on so that was changed however they did make Freddy a child molester in the 2010 remake which I will get into once I get to the remake and review that one I actually have quite a few fun facts about Freddy so Robert England was actually not Wes Craven's first choice his first choice was actually to have a stuntman play in the role but after testing out several stuntmen he decided that he did need an actor for the role and while I obviously was not even alive when this movie came out or when most of these movies came out it'd be really hard for me to imagine that the franchise would be as successful or become so iconic without Robert England being in the role and I'm sure many people would agree so let me know your thoughts on that down below also Wes Craven's original concept for Freddy was supposed to be a lot more gross with like pus coming out of his flesh um, exposed teeth on the upper jaw stuff like that however logistically the makeup artist just said that that wouldn't really be possible so we got this iconic look instead which was inspired apparently by photos from the UCLA burn unit victims. The scene where Freddy's arms were elongated was achieved by using two men holding fishing poles and operating them on said arms. And then those puppet arms were indeed attached to Robert England. And my last one for Freddy Krueger, it took them three hours each day to get the Freddy makeup on him. But luckily, this movie only took 32 days to film. Heather Langenkamp beat out over 200 actresses for the role of Nancy, and this included Demi Moore and Courtney Cox. All of the boiler room footage in this movie was actually shot in the Lincoln Heights jail basement and the building was later condemned because of high levels of asbestos so it probably wasn't really very safe to film there but they didn't know that the famous scraping noise of Freddy's glove was created by scraping a steak knife under a metal chair Elm Street was named after the Elm Street in Wilton Illinois which is where Wes Craven went to college and the scene where Freddy presses through Nancy's wall was actually achieved through them putting up spandex over a hole in the wall and then pressing against it in that shot Freddy is played by special effects designer Jim Doyle and finally in the very last scene of the movie, the convertible top came down much faster and harder than it was supposed to, and those were actually the genuine reactions of the actors. Okay, that was a lot of fun facts. I want to give you just like a brief prologue before I get into my opinions about the movie, because when I was younger, like first getting into horror, this was a movie that I promised myself that I would never watch purely on the concept alone. I used to be very afraid of the dark. Horror movies used to be very, very effective for me, and I got scared super easily, but I still love them. I'm also very susceptible to 
nightmares because I dream almost every single night. I have very vivid dreams and I often get nightmares. So there was just no way that I was gonna subject myself to this movie and have nightmares about this but here we are. But now that I am old and seasoned at a ripe 21 years old, I decided to finally jump into this series and I'm so glad that I did. But before I get into any picky stuff, which there's not a lot of, I just want you guys to know that I really like this movie. I watched it by myself late at night and like it was the perfect setting. It also luckily didn't scare me. I didn't have any nightmares and I wasn't really expecting that because now that I've watched several movies from the 80s and I've watched a lot more horror and have become much more desensitized, this luckily wasn't scary to me. But I still thought it was really well done and I but it was such a fun movie. Now I don't know if that was really like the intention but this movie did feel pretty self-aware and on top of that the performance of Robert England honestly it felt kind of goofy to me like I really hope that doesn't offend anybody because I'm sure that at the time it was very frightening and like I said I was terrified of watching this movie all growing up but his performance was pretty comedic and it offered a great deal of levity for me which I do appreciate in a lot of horror movies because one of my favorite subgenres actually is dark comedies. One of the biggest things that I appreciated about this movie is the dialogue that they have in the sleep clinic with these sleep doctors because they tell us that like, you know, we don't really know why we dream. We don't understand a lot of the brain's functions and dreaming is like a very crucial and important thing. It's very crucial to your REM cycle, but we don't know why it happens. And the way that this movie is almost 40 years old and we still don't really know a whole lot about the brain and we still don't really know why we dream. I really think it's helped to uphold this movie and keep it from aging because it's still such a mysterious thing and it makes the concept of Freddy still so terrifying. I also think that the setting that they chose for the layer of Freddy was so amazing. In Friday the 13th, Jason has like his little shack layer kind of a thing and then they kind of copied that in the Halloween franchise in part five when Michael has this like attic layer shrine kind of a thing. I think that the setting where Freddy lives is honestly one of the most unique and one of the coolest and most frightening that I've seen out of the three series that I've been exploring so far. I think that one problem that a lot of old movies suffer from is just that the pacing is really off. I think that nowadays people have a much shorter attention span so that is kind of on the fault of like generational differences but the pacing of this movie of Nightmare on Elm Street was very quick. It was really good. Like I never felt like it was dragging it always felt like it was moving at a very proper pace now I don't want to make this review too long because I just feel like most things to say about this movie have definitely already been said at this point I think that once I start getting into more sequels and stuff that's when my reviews become a little bit more interesting so I'm just gonna talk about a couple of like a little nitpicky things before I end this video oh my god wait actually I totally forgot to mention this is the last good thing that I liked Lynn Shay is in this movie and I had no idea about that we love Miss Lynn Shay we love Miss Elise okay anyways one thing that I didn't like is is how they normalized female behavior. Now I know that they do this kind of in an attempt to like justify why these teenagers die because like they're kind of just crappy people or all they care about is sex and whatever. And so it's kind of like, okay, it's justified that they die. However, I do think that it can be kind of harmful. And like, especially in this movie, one of the girl's boyfriends like draws a knife on Glenn's character. And then his girlfriend kind of just proceeds to like laugh that off. And then they go upstairs to have sex. And I'm like, in what scenario is it ever good to normalize that behavior? I don't know. And I also don't think it's necessary to make these teenagers bad people because Freddy Krueger doesn't like differentiate between good people and bad people. He'll kill anybody. So why not make them likable characters? I don't know. I just feel like if they were actually likable, it would definitely up the suspense a lot more. And maybe I would have actually been scared by this movie because I would have like not wanted them to die. But the only person you really root for is Nancy and like kind of Glenn, but Glenn also falls asleep in the middle of their plans. He just like doesn't really listen to her very well. He's not entirely likable, honestly. So the gender dynamic in this movie was not my favorite, but the last nitpicky thing that I want to point out Please understand that like I'm very desensitized to horror and my opinions are gonna be very different to classic horror fans, people that grew up in the 80s watching these movies because at the time they were certainly groundbreaking and I'm sure they were scary. But I just found um, a lot of the ways that they portrayed Freddy Krueger to be really funny. Like I've mentioned in my Halloween videos, one reason why Michael is my favorite serial killer out of any slasher franchise is because he is so stoic and he moves with like such still grace. With Freddy, uh, it's a little bit more like... Ah! 
you know, it's just, it's kind of goofy. So for that reason, this movie wasn't really scary to me, but I think it gave it a way higher entertainment value and thus making it incredibly rewatchable because now I will have so much more enjoyment rewatching this movie, knowing that there is comedic stuff like that for me to enjoy. Also, aside from some of Freddy's mannerisms, the only other thing that I didn't really like was the very last scene of this movie. Like the rules of the worlds between ours and Freddy's were very fuzzy to me. For instance, in the jail scene, when he is about to strangle that one guy with the sheets and whatever, Freddy's not actually there and yet he can manipulate the sheets in our world. However, he has to be pulled into our world for us to be able to hurt him. But then in the very last scene, I guess Nancy was dreaming, but like it was very unclear to me. I did, anyways. But even though it's kind of messy, it did set it up nicely for a sequel. But there was a lot also that really worked for Freddy. I think the whole scraping thing, like the scraping sound was great. Obviously his lair was great, his burn marks and like the makeup special effects, that looked great. I'm so surprised that for 1984, they had such stellar practical effects like that. But like I mentioned, it did take them three hours to get that on his face and rightfully so because he looked amazing. There was also consistency with that throughout the entire movie. It never looked different. There were never any continuity errors. The makeup team consistently made him look the same way and just wow. But I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon because I just feel like I'm not saying anything that hasn't been said before, but just so you guys know, I love this movie and I am so excited to watch the rest of them. I still haven't watched the sequel for next week yet, so I'm probably gonna do that tonight and I'm really excited to see where this franchise goes. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here, but you guys can follow me on social media at Kai Johns on both Twitter and Instagram. And on my Instagram stories, I always update you guys with what horror movies I'm watching and so that way you can watch them too and you know what I'm about to review next. I also recently got a Letterboxd account, so definitely check check that out and follow me over there. It's also at Kai Johns. And over there, I'll do little quick reviews for movies that I don't intend on talking about on my YouTube channel. Also, shout out one of my subscribers for recommending that to me. I got a DM on Instagram, which by the way, like feel free to say hi to me on Instagram. So thank you for that. I am really enjoying using Letterboxd. But as always, check out those GoFundMes and petitions linked down below. I update those every week. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I catch you in the next one. Bye.